Pakakasama po natin live mula sa Dublin, Ireland, Arnie Trinidad. Hi, Arnie! Hello! Good Hi, to be here. Arnie! Yes, makakasama pa rin hey, po Arnie. natin mula naman po sa Frankfurt, Germany, Miss Jessica Gross. Si Jessica po ay uh, teacher sa uh, Germany at uh, meron siyang mga tinutulungan kamag-anak sa Pilipinas para pag-aralin yes. sila. And also, meron din po tayong opportunity na kapag imbita po tayo ng ilang teachers sa uh, public school teachers in uh, in the Philippines, they will be joining us later. So, Crystal, would you like to fire the fe- first question uh, to the secretary? Yes, uh, I'd like to say it's an honor po to meet you. Uh, and uh, you're an amazing educator po, <laughs> Madam Secretary Briones. So my question po sa inyo, uh, you wanted the schools to open. Uh, Philippines had online learning and much later, the blended education format. Is this going to be the strategy this year as COVID cases continue to rise for in the Philippines? Well, uh, it depends. Uh, the, this is what complicates education or any other public activity at this time because it's complicated by COVID. Ang laki ng impact ng COVID on whatever we do, whatever we decide, and not only in education but in other uh, public uh, uh, issues. Now, um, last year, Congress amended, uh, they passed a resolution saying that uh, in cases of emergency or calamities, uh, the president will decide as to when classes will open on the advice of the Secretary of Education. Mm. So uh, that is something we are complying with and and which uh, situation was not existing uh, pre, uh, pre-COVID. So, malaking papel kung anong mangyayari sa COVID. For example, and I'll share this with you uh, unless um, uh, you were made aware of it. Um, when the, the president said that, um, uh, when Congress said, okay, the president should decide when classes will be open. Uh, kami, we said, uh, president said, uh, uh, hindi pwede unless vaccines are available. Uh, in the meantime, while there are no vaccines, I will not expose the children to risk. So we 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 thought and we uh, strategized and we said that uh, why don't we suggest uh, pilot uh, studies and under particular conditions, under particular situations. And um, so sabi namin, uh, initially, apat ang condition namin. One, our themselves should be... Uh, ready for uh, for uh, the uh, protocols, the health protocols required by COVID, like for distancing, kailangan may tubig, kailangan may medicine, kailangan malapit sa health, ano, regularly inspected by the health authorities, da, 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 da. Yung readiness ng school mismo. Secondly, sabi namin, kailangan may consent ng local governments because uh, local governments uh, are very protective of their populations, especially the children. At saka we, uh, they come in whenever uh, we have problems because it's their territory, it's their kingdom. So sabi namin, unless a local government agrees, we will not insist on holding face-to-face classes. Sabi mm-hmm. namin, pilot. Uh, and then the third is that the parents have to share in the responsibility. And, and fourthly, those who uh, kasi link kasi ang education to the economy. And, and that cannot be denied. Uh, we have nearly 900 private schools uh, which had to postpone uh, the opening of their classes because uh, of, of lack of students. <clears throat> Ang drop ng enrollment is not in the public sector but in the private schools. Mm-hmm. So, uh, uh, ang sabi namin na yung mga nagsiserve, nagbibigay ng services sa mga uh, schools, it, we will be helping the economy, really. Bus services, uniforms, books, uh, canteens, uh, food products, uh, we, we have to make sure that they also uh, uh, comply with it. 
expected protocol. So, apat yung major conditions namin. And on that basis, we identified uh, uh, a list of uh, at least 1,900 schools na re-review ng aming regional directors who might, uh, who might qualify for, for the, the pilot. Uh, mm -hmm. Then Senate came in, House came in, and they said, masyadong malaki. But, but, but bear in mind, you have 61,000 schools. Mm -hmm. And out of this, 1,900 1, may possibility. Kasi ang una yung risk assessment eh, like, uh, like Crystal, uh, uh, NCR, uh, you really have to think twice before you encourage face-to-face. -face. Mm -hmm. uh, like, like Bulacan uh, and, and all the other provinces which are mentioned, which are public knowledge na binabantayan, you, you cannot encourage face-to-face. Uh, uh, it, it's too risky, and that's what the president is really very worried about. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, yun, sabi nila, masyadong malaki mm -hmm. ang 1,900. So, we, we, we reduced it further. We became more strict. And so, now we're down to about 300 schools uh, uh, in case um, uh, where we will uh, propose um, what we describe as a pilot face-to-face. -face. Jessica, would you like to follow up with uh, the secretary? Ano yung tanong mo sa kanya before we go to Arnie? Okay. Karito po yun, ma'am. Uh, nasagot nyo na po yung tanong po dapat, dapat mm -hmm. kasi na tanong na rin na attorney uh, Dias. Um, pwede po ba kayo magbigay ng inspiring words para sa mga students sa Pilipinas na magtsaga muna sila na wala pa talagang uh, plano na mag-face-to-face -face ang Pilipinas uh, pwede po ba kayong magbigay sa kanila ng, uh, ng sabi, sabi na na po natin mga two sentences para naman matanggap din nila uh -huh. uh, uh, hindi sila masyadong dapat hindi sila masyadong mahirapan sa panahon ngayon uh, we, we take uh, a leaf from our Marawi experience malala ninyo yung Marawi more than 20,000 children making back with all over the country and and we were able to accommodate them from Abra down to the down to the south. Uh, I, I just like to repeat what I said at the United Nations General Assembly. Sinabiko, education must continue. We have survived two world wars. We have survived rebellions. We have survived earlier pandemics, uh, Spanish flu, cholera. Uh, etc. And learning continues. To delay uh, the learning process even by one year or by six months, uh, then uh, the child uh, has to be taught other things. Na. A child who is 11 years old, by the time he goes back to school, he will be 12 years old. Iba naman ang ituturo natin sa kanya. So, kailangan talagang ipagpatuloy yan. And what we are doing is, is, is blended uh, learning, hindi, hindi pwedeng itigil talaga. Oo. Uh, that, that's how I learned to read during the war years. Mga aeroplano were droning over, overhead. Eh. I was learning may ABC on banana leaves. No? So, uh, nagawa natin yan. Nagawa natin sa Marawi. Gagawin din natin yan ngayon. But it will not be perfect. Ang, ang ano lang kasi, we want a perfect solution in an imperfect situation. We want a clear plan in a situation where planning parameters are very fluid and dynamic. What we need is flexibility. Pag, pag kailangan pigilan, we have to stop. Pero kung pwede bubuksan, bubuksan namin. Kaya nga sabi namin, yung private schools, kung pakayana nilang June, eh magbukas sila sa June, on a case-to-case -case basis, kung kaya nilang uh, pure blended learning ang gagawin nila. No? And, uh, but there are places na hindi talaga magagawa kasi yung problem rose of connectivity. Yeah. Oh, yes. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. So I think, ma'am, yung, yung question siguro ni Arnie would be uh, somehow related to connectivity na rin. And um, Arnie, please go ahead with your question. Um, this is more of a reflection on um, Secretary. Um, I think the pandemic presents us with a lot of um, opportunities in, in terms of um, transforming and improving our education um, system. I was thinking that uh, what can what we can actually do is 
uh, for central government, for instance, to um, uh, produce the lectures out, uh, themselves. Kasi parang sa, sa tingin ko, mahirap para sa mga public school teachers uh, from all over the country, especially those coming from the provinces, to produce um, distance education um, materials themselves. So is there a possibility, for instance, for the DepEd to produce lectures uh, pre present this via uh, video such as uh, what he calls YouTube or other platforms or even um, television and then uh, what he calls this but this will also require the transformation of the roles of our public school teachers in terms of uh, perhaps them just not just delivering lectures but then becoming discussion leaders and uh, content context uh -huh. to later on yeah, Arnene, you know, that's exactly what we are doing. Uh, you, you try accessing yung tinatawag namin DepEd Commons. All the lectures, mga materials, even mm -hmm. exams are, are in DepEd Commons. And we have more than 10 million subscribers already. Mm -hmm. Mga teachers at saka mga students. And uh, we are training our teachers kasi uh, ang sabi namin, Kung hindi pwede sa ano yung yung mga libro printed material dahil we are killing the the environment eh uh, kung hindi pwede then you have you have television because many cities local governments have their own television stations already the, the big local governments and then uh kung hindi pwede sa TV then you have radio I, ako, I believe in radio because uh, ilang gera lang na panalo wala namang TV wala namang Twitter wala namang Facebook radio naman talaga eh, si Mac Arthur na I shall return I shall return uh, unfortunately he did return anyway so uh, uh, yun, yun ang um, ginagamit natin ngayon our teachers are being taught to to ano uh, lecture to, um, to screen <laughs> di ba and they are trained by professionals mga professionals talaga ang nagturo sa kanila na ang, ang what di, what is difficult yung adjustment side is that the role of the teachers has changed from lecture one side uh, yung yung the lecture approach to to encouraging thinking yung integrative kasi uh, alam mo Arne ang requirement natin sa ano yung tinatawag natin na learning uh, competences to, to be able to survive senior high school, you have to have 15,000 learning competences. We reduced it to 5,000. Your capacity to for critical thinking, and that is in the law. Yun ang gusto nating encourage. Hindi yung not in addition to ano yung ginagawa namin sa panahon namin magmemorize kami ng multiplication table. Ah, hindi na yung 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 critical thinking, analytical working together, finding solutions to to real problems but, but this cannot be done in, in in just one year no so we but we are moving along this line uh yung sa, sa DepEd Commons natin sa television uh, uh mga teacher in tawag namin sa kanila uh, are teacher broadcaster as a matter of fact and mga and daming awards na received ng Philippines on the development of this kind of, of approach to teaching. Exacto yung sinasabi, yung, yung sinasabi mo. And this is where teachers have difficulty making that transition. Kasi yung role nila nag-iba. Ma'am, can, uh, can I ask you, kasi po naging uh, part kayo ng cabinet ni uh, President Joseph Estrada, so hindi na bago sa inyo ang pagiging uh, head of, um, of a department, no? Um, um, ang tanong ko po, may ibang layer kasi ng challenges ngayong panahon. Nung panahon na yes. part kayo ng cabinet, wala pa gaanong Twitter, wala pa itong social media na ito, wala yung mga trolls, wala yung fake news. So, paano ah, po yes, yes, yes. handle yan? Uh, well, um, I, I only have my name. Pag sasabihin na I don't know anything, because I am old, I'm 80 years old. Uh, of course, that's the most uh, unintelligent uh, observation that can that can be that can be made. You look at uh, Stephen Hawking. Uh, uh, you look at uh, a lot of 80-year-old people, and there are also very young people who are also. Uh, I know it's it's not a question of age. 
And during the Senate he, uh, the confirmation hearing for me as Secretary of Education, that was also brought out na, uh, uh, the, the age factor. And my answer is, there is no correlation between the state of my knees and the state of my brains. And uh, sabi ng isang congressman, I would rather have weak knees than weak brains. It's not uh, age is not a determinant uh, at this time, no. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, you have brilliant eighty-year-olds. You also have stupid eighty-year-olds. Uh, you have brilliant twenty-year-olds, and there are, and you also have stupid twenty-year-olds. Mm -hmm. What I can say, Rose, is that uh, I have my name, okay. and, and 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 that that name speaks. Uh, Uh, for its uh, for itself yes. and uh, ang, 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 ano, I realized no uh, good that you are coming from different parts of, of, of Europe I realized na uh, ano ka yung information na tatanggap ninyo about education is it all bashing is it all debacal is it all mm. bad news mm. uh, There are a lot of good things that are happening in education. We are winning in contests, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, this is my favorite example. It's not about DepEd. It's about DOST, Halimbawa, Arne. Uh, two years ago, DOST set up uh, what they describe <laughs> as a brain center. And... Uh, It was approved immediately by by, by, by the by the cabinet. Because uh, who wants to debate with a scientist like uh, like uh, Secretary Boy de la Peña about the state of our brains? <laughs> so, mm -hmm. uh, uh, we were very happy about it. But it seemed it did not catch the attention of the public. Mm -hmm. And oh uh, no, a few months back, the OST na naman announced that uh, they're setting up a space center in cooperation with the leading space agencies of, mm -hmm. of, 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 of the world. It was not picked up. What is picked up are, are of course, the, the, the more as, uh, whatever is considered as, as exciting. So, um, and then ngayon, recently, Nag-announce na naman, ito si DOST just goes ahead and does what they believe they should be doing. They're setting up a virology center mm -hmm. so that we can reach the point when we will be possibly producing our own uh, our own vaccines and so on, developing that capacity. And I challenged the Department of Education. I said, you will not only be getting, boy will not Boy, this is Boy de la Peña. He will not only be getting and, and luring back all the top-notch scientists from mm -hmm. all over the world. He will be needing research assistants. He will even be needing clerks. He will be needing data gatherers. And our senior high school program, our basic education program, has to be strengthened in math and in the sciences to be able to support what the OST is doing. Mm -hmm. And And, and and for me these are very exciting things that's why we some bagong uh, aspect of which you might find interesting Arnie, when you come home is we have a future study unit what does the future look like for for the world and uh, for asia for the philippines and for education hmm. so that our, our children when they graduate they will not get lost and said a hey, absent ako noon Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. Ganyan. Oh. Oh. And there are very exciting things that are happening everywhere else but they are not necessarily noticed because uh, perhaps they are not considered as, as interesting thing. isn't it interesting to put up a viral uh, virology center to even dream of a space Center, a country like the Philippines. But to be able to do that, you have to have people who, who know the basics, di ba, Anne? Yes. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Jessica, mm -hmm. even for your janitors who will be picking and sweeping up all the papers and so on and so forth. 
cleaning the, the rooms and and ano kailangan may and basic understanding sila yung data gatherers they don't have to be PhDs pero sila ang mag input and this and, and and this is where the the uh, education system has to be uh, strengthened and, and so uh, uh, we are looking forward to a very active future study uh, unit Senate is supporting us. Um, there are other agencies also who are looking at futures. I see maybe futures is it's more exciting than the present, which is so, uh, <laughs> this is such a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Baka, Jessica, you might want to share something na pwede mong, um, about the education system in, in, in mm -hmm. Germany because you're, uh, you're a secondary school teacher there. Um, nahirapan Bata po sa Germany, dito. Jessica. Dito po, malapit po ako sa Frankfurt. Mga siguro mga 30 minutes away from Frankfurt po. Oh, or one. Oh, Opo, oh. Hessen po. Um, mega, mega. <laughs> mega urban. Oh. Hindi naman po mega urban. Marami-rami din na ano. Pero ganito oh. po yung marami po talang nainggit ng mga teachers dito. Lalo nung kinuwento ko sa kanila na ang Pilipinas ay handa pagdating sa mga school materials. Kasi yun po ang narinig ko last year. Um, kaya po na-inspire po ako niyan. Uh, kaya kahit po gabi, kahit po gabi ay pwede kong kausapin ng mga students ko kapag meron silang mga tanong tungkol sa lesson namin. Kasi distance learning din po kami last year. Pero nag-start na po kami ngayon ng face-to-face -face kasi malapit na naman po namin ma-flatten yung, ano, yung line. Malapit, malapit, <laughs> malapit na po ma-flatten. Sana nga po tuloy-tuloy na. Um, uh, pero nandito pa rin po yung hirap kasi meron pa rin po kami talagang ano eh, yung face mask, kailangan pa rin ano, uh, to wear the face mask nandiyan pa rin po yung distance uh, na 1.5 meters nandiyan pa rin po um, pero sana po um, nakikiusap lang po yung mga students sa sa Pilipinas na rin po yung mga tinutulungan yes, yes, namin yes, yes. na um, nagkakaroon, nagkakaroon na rin po talaga sila ng mga problema halimbawa yung nagkakaroon ng mental health issues kasi po wala yes. po silang connection sa mga teachers nila eh. Nakikita lang po nila yun sa ano sa sa distance learning, no? Wala po silang connection sa mga teachers nila kaya minsan po hindi nila alam kung gaano kaseryoso yung mga teachers nila. Um, nagkakaroon ng mental issues kasi po um nagiging uh, naapektuhan po sila sa mga outputs kapag nagpo-produce sila ng mga uh, ng uh, ng mga answers sa questions ng teachers na no? mababa yung grades nila hindi nila maintindihan kung bakit mababa ang grades nila so ibig sabihin po noon uh, yung yung baka po pwedeng i, yung mga teachers natin sa Pilipinas na na meron silang mga mga lectures sa sinabi nga ni ano uh, um, na mga lectures na makikita o meron silang mga seminars na makikita na yung methods pati yung papaano ba magturo pagdating sa distance learning kasi po parang binaksak na lang po sa kanila yung trabaho na yan magi distance learning kayo ngayon uh, yun po ang yung feeling nila um, <coughs> tsaka yung oh. sinabi nyo kanina kung ano po ba bakit ba maraming mga new generation na gustong mag teachers sino po bang gusto niyan um, yung isa po ang nagsabi po sa akin um, sabi nila um, iba daw kasi yung inspirasyon nila eh nakikita nila sa ibang tao na na yung yung mga bata daw talaga yung pundasyon ng ng ating uh, ng ating future sa yung, yung yung magiging buhay buhay natin yung mga bata yan ang kailangan tulungan mm -hmm. para uh, para magis magi matatag sila para yung pagdating ng ano para pagdating ng panahon um, um mababago yung utak nila, madedevelop yung utak nila at uh, makakaroon sila ng um, sabi natin ng inspirasyon din para sabi nila sa ibang tao na yung mga teachers talaga pagdating sa mga ganyang bagay, pagdating sa pandemic, pagdating sa anumang problema sa sa buhay natin, yung edukasyon na kailangan na hindi kalimutan. Uh, uh, alam mo, tamang-tama, eksakto-eksakto yung sinasabi mo, Jessica. At saka yun ang gusto nating uh, mangyari. Uh, Napaka-ikli ng panahon. No? Isang, isang, isang taon ito, uh, uh, within five months, you know, we had to produce the learning continuity ano, program. Kasi nagbago lahat. 
and we produce it within, within five months nag uh, hindi nagtuturo yung mga teachers tapos nagtabago yung roles nila bago not only the teachers but the parents the community and local governments uh, as well no and most important yung sinasabi mo yung epekto sa bata uh-huh. si ako i get i, I get uh, ano mga messages from children na sabi na i don't want to be taught by my mother <laughs> o anong anong gawin mo ya gusto niya teacher pero mixed ang story uh, rose there are teachers who go out of their way tinatawagan uh-huh. nila yung uh, parents tinatawagan nila yung bata kaya ano bibigyan na sila ng load para mm-hmm. makakomunicate etc. At saka may policy kasi tayo uh, na uh, if possible yung mga teachers uh, should be from uh, should be residents of of the uh, municipality or a local government. Tagaroon sila. Okay. So kabisado nila yung barangay nila. Alam nila kung saan may mga exemplary teachers alam mo na nagiging awarding at sa mga global teachers award na they really is uh, 1 million dollars ito ha pumupunta sa uh, pinupuntahan nila yung mga bahay ng mga estudyante kinakausap yung parents so it uh, parang two ways kasi the parents tell us ay yung teacher hindi naman nagko-contact sa amin so pinaman ng teacher ay yung parents hindi naman kami sinasagot kung nagtatawag kami so uh ito this are part of the transition process kaya mixed yung ano uh mixed yung uh, resulta but as we go along uh, mas marami na tayong uh, leksyon na uh, uh, napupulot including as i said uh, even the, the the fake uh, uh material no at saka uh, it's very uh, interesting na even as we are uh We, I, I, we like to think that we are a highly educated country, but at the same time, we look down on the state of education. We laugh at our, our grammar, we laugh. Sabi nga ng our, one of the greatest ballet uh, dancers that we produce, Sinonoy Froilan. And he's a waray, so he speaks with this very distinct waray accent. Sabi niya, why is it that when Brezhnikov speaks in his Russian English, We are fascinated absolutely, and then when he speaks in his waray, <laughs> waray Filipino, eh, people people laugh, yeah. diba? Sa nya ng ating mental colony, hmm. uh, when French is spoken, it's exotic. But then when it is uh, Visayan or it is Ilocano or it is Pampango, then it is uh, it is funny and it is ignorant. So y- yung yung uh, ambivalent attitude natin towards what we think is the superiority of Philippine education vis-a-vis its inferiority. Uh, nag-aabot-abot yan. At saka lumalabas ngayon because we are in, uh, in a crisis. But your points are very important. Yes. Ang bottom line natin, Jessica, is the child. No po. The child has to be prepared for the world outside, the world of work or the world of further studies. Uh-oh. Uh, alam mo, Arne, karamihan ang mga bata, hanggang ngayon, hindi, hindi mo talaga ma-erase yun sa isip nila. Pag tapos nila ng high school, gusto pa rin nilang mag, ano, sa, gusto pa rin nilang mag-university, gusto pa rin nilang mag-college. Hindi sila nag um, ano about 30% plus lang ang gustong magtrabaho. And, uh, which is not the same as in, in other countries, uh, I suppose. So, uh, um, mas longer yung ano nila but, and, but they have to be prepared for what is uh, what is outside because it's, it's very competitive uh, you, you you know that kayo you, kayo kayo ang nandiyan sa Europe you have survived yes that's okay. why ma'am baka may uh, yeah you have Christian, many stories we have kayo many personal. stories ma'am that's oh, right oh. ma'am baka ito si Crystal Dias is a solicitor so Um, on the first wave of the lockdown, we all had to be teachers. We're working from home. We're yes. trying our best to be everything um, uh, as a working woman, also as a teacher. So, Crystal, maybe you can share something what you what you did, and also fire the uh, next question to the secretary. And then you can you you also worry about your families back home. 
because yes. uh, all uh, many of them look to to you <laughs> oh, yeah. whom they what's consider the, the, the fortunate uh, no, <laughs> the fortunate happening? relatives to to, yeah. to help them along mm-hmm. their uh, mm-hmm. uh, challenges oh yes we had okay. our beatings we we were you know we I had we, dito sa UK ma'am i mean um yung first wave talaga it's ano um it was very difficult i don't yeah. know how we survived it but yeah, um, but paros i'm sure mm-hmm. you, you would be stricken by by theory you don't know what will happen tomorrow yes, yes. You, you might be booted out of the country or you might be losing a job or or what and then a relative is sick and you know the usual uh, uh, stories <laughs> yes that's right yeah. okay, i salute all the teachers out there because it's not an easy job you know i'm a oh. i'm a i'm a solicitor uh i i i deal with clients and so on but i could never deal with my eight-year-old son because he's a procrastinator he didn't want to be taught by me so it was very very hard and i had to ask the school to take him back so that he could continue with his education it's never easy so i really salute all our teachers not just in the uk but everywhere so mama i have a question for you actually um you know the british government has just announced funding for uk children to catch up with the private tuition if they failed behind uh, uh you know during covid what measures would the Philippines take to ensure our next generation can catch up with their education needs? Well, as I said, uh, right now, uh, the Constitution provides that the largest uh, item of the budget uh, should always go to education, to the education sector, and not just basic ed- uh, uh, tech book and also university level. Kaya, uh, Kaya it, it is always uh, the biggest uh, allocation, but it does not mean that it is enough because the law of economics tells us that resources are never enough because our, our needs keep on expanding. No? So, uh, what we are doing is yung mga nagko crossover, nagma migrate, and I noticed that four years ago pa, when I started, na nagma migrate from the private sector to the public sector talagang tinatanggap namin ay yung Marawi children more than 20,000 yun all over the country uh, even without documentation basta sasabihin tag, ano Marawi child ka tatanggapin wala na no questions asked teachers na nag uh, nagbakwit kumbaga no all over the country and that was a good uh, precedent uh, for us so and uh, not only that, uh, yung financial support is is there, but it's not enough, Crystal. It's not enough. It's way below the uh, UN uh, standards for the percent of the GDP uh, which should be spent for education. Number one ang ang education, pero kulang pa rin because uh, uh, every year, of course, uh, more than a million kids uh, enter the school system. And, and right now, we have mga 26.6 million kids. Uh, compare mo halimbawa sa one of our most admired, I really admire this particular Southeast Asian country, but sabi nila, sabi ng minister doon, do not look at us because we're just very small. Uh, we're just uh, the size of one of your districts in Manila. But it, it, it's leading uh, the pack of... Uh, 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 education institutions uh, worldwide yan. and also isa palang good news na, uh, I, before I forget Rose uh, we, we're very disturbed all of us of course we're very disturbed with the results of the PISA assessment uh, tests mm-hmm. no? but we have tried to get it through to the media that even as we are hugging and, and I suspect magkanda ano ano ako magkatag the corazon when I learned that we were at the bottom, but uh, we also learned that there are 20 schools all over the country whose scores are higher or equivalent to that of the OECD countries. And and one of this uh, is Pasig. Then you have with Bicol, you have in the Visayas, scattered all over the country and. 
and we can learn from this uh, from this uh, schools mm -mm. and most of them are public schools public schools no nakakabili yes, yes, school. sa Pasig tatlo sila mm -hmm. and then at Pasig is unusual tatlo ka schools dalawang public uh, isang private so uh, uh, we are learning from them Pilipi, uh, naabutan lang kami ng pandemic because I want to visit all these 20 schools to find out um, what's their secret. Uh, yeah, the, 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 their open secret. Yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, like like one can one one uh, official uh, when he went to the north, sabi ko, uh, I would advise you to to address the students and the people there in English, mm -hmm. uh, not necessarily in the national language, but in English. Sabi niyo, bakit? Sabi ko, historically, alam mo kung bakit nag i ano, the missionaries were, uh, were there before, you know, before you passed all the laws on national language. Eh, ang galing mag-English, bagyo, very high ang rating sa English. Uh, and then, surprise, Region 6, for example. Yes. Taas sa mathematics. Uh, mm -hmm. Pasig, uh, I, I really admire Pasig. Kasi tatlong schools yan. Out of the 20, Mm -hmm. oh, there, there must be something going on there. Yes, that they can the schools and yeah. uh, oh, oh, and you, 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 we look at the the good side. Uh, I mean, uh, the good news of it that uh, namang uh, mayroong and mm -hmm. and usually it goes to the teacher. Eh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ma'am, oh. siguro at this point, um, I think yung mga teachers po natin from Bicol are back wow. safe. Sure. Baka pwede silang makapagtanong. May we sure. welcome uh, principal of Parang Elementary School, Miss Des Non. And also, we have principal of Kalogog Elementary School. Uh, nandiyan pa ba siya? Si Miss Villarin? Yes, po. Yes, yes po. Miss Villarin. So you are all eavesdropping. Nakikinaki kayo sa discussion natin yes, um, all this time. And also, Miss Rosella Marcos from uh, middle school, high school in Jose Panganiba National High School. So, Miss Mads... Yes. Yes. Roselia? Roselia is um, Camarines... No, they're all from Camarines. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So, Miss Mags, please go ahead. Ask the first question from Camarines Norte. Uh, yes, ma'am. Good afternoon po. Uh, gusto ko lang pong malaman kung ready na po ba yung mga printed uh, self-learning materials natin para sa susunod na school year at masisiguro po ba nat ng DepEd na hindi na gagawa o magpiprint ang mga teachers para naman po ang mga teachers ay makapag-focus na lang sa, sa monitoring at checking ng mga outputs ng students at the same time yung remediation po. Oo. Uh, napakaganda yung question mo dahil tinatanong niya ng karine yung mga teachers at the ground uh, level. Because at the end of the day, sila naman ang nag-deliver ng, ano, ng uh, uh, learning uh, uh, process sa ating mga bata. Uh, hinahabol yan. Ang, ang nagiging challenge sa atin, Rose and Sarah Crystal, is yung last na, na bagyo. Yung last na bagyo, mga about 1.6 billion of ano printed material ang ang nasira no oo uh, at saka na realize namin but we have known it all the time ang pinaka expensive na uh, uh, approach to to teaching of course is the use of printed material uh, uh, matagal na yang dinidebate kaya gusto namin talaga mas as possible to go digital to go ICT and so on and so forth na, na pa ng, ng paraan uh, 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 sa ano ka di ba sa region region Hi. 5 no? region 5 yes, sige po. Gilbert Sad Sad ang inyong regional director yes ma'am so, I will bring that to his attention uh, na uh, you are concerned but you are not speaking only for yourself, but you're speaking for all uh, teachers who are preparing already for the next round. And the fact, as I said, that the uh, um, choice is closing down the schools. Yes, ma'am. And going on with, uh, with uh, the learning uh, 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 process for, for the children. Because you can't waste 
time ng mga bata. Uh, I think, kaya nga, sabi ng iba ba, why did I say that uh, victory yung pag-opening ng schools? So victory because the choice was to close them. And uh, the harm and uh, the, the damage that we would have caused the children would have been very much uh, uh, heavier. Eh, dalawang gera na nga, nakapagpatuloy tayo ito pa. Oo. Ma'am, si Ms. Lourdes noon, she's principal of uh, Parang Elementary School. It's also in the same province, Camarines Norte. Yeah, Camarines Five. Go ahead po, Ms. Uh, Lourdes. What's your question, ma'am? Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. Hi, hi. Uh, hello po, ma'am. Good afternoon. Uh, as much as we wanted, ma'am, to implement blended modality of learning, like online classes, so that we can access a uh, deaf ed common and the radio based instructions hindi po namin ma magawa because of the uh, internet uh, absence of yeah. internet connectivity yes. with our home partners uh, poor internet connection uh, signal and the absence of radio station within our locality ma'am so ang tanong ko po ma'am ay Ano po kaya yung best possible ways na matutulungan kami ng department para po oh. makapag-implement kami this blended modalities? Dahil I think, ma'am, mas effective kung makakapag-access kami online kaysa po naka-depend kami solely with the modular print. Oh, totoo yan. Totoo yan. At saka yung talaga ang direksyon eh. Kasi kawawa yung planet natin eh. Uh, we are destroying already uh, our, our planet and we saw that very clearly. Uh, billions ang, ang, ang cost ng uh, each time a uh, storm passes by and you have 20 storms passing by and pati mga volcanic eruptions and so on and talagang uh, uh, nagkakaroon tayo na damage. Uh, as I was saying, uh, hinahabol yan ngayon uh, itong mga materials na ito. Ang, ang Ang issue yung sinasabi ni Arne, yung quality ng ating materials na ginagawa kasi we have a method of vetting. Pero kung minsan nakita namin yung sa mga uh, materials na marami, may mga mali, no? na klarong-klarong mali, eh, uh, hindi dumaan sa vetting process. At sa kuminsan, hindi talaga sa, sa uh, DepEd. Pero uh, natuto na tayo and ito pa Marines Norte ay... Eh, uh, Palagi yung biktima, suki naman yan ng, <laughs> ng mga, mga uh, disasters and all that. Uh, Katagwanes, yun ang mga mag-classmate ng mga, mga lugar. Eh, pag, paghandaan yan. And I will call the attention of ano, Director Sansan to your concerns, which are very valid. In the first part of our discussion, gusto niyo pong malaman kung ano yung mga driving force ng mga gustong maging teacher. But maybe we can ask our teachers on the ground, bakit sila nag-teacher, di ba? Maybe you can share it with the secretary very briefly. Ha, good. Yeah, si, si uh, Miss... I'm, I'm curious, I'm curious. curious. Simulan natin, <laughs> simulan natin po dun sa nag-aaral ng uh, no, uh, doing his PhD in Dublin. Kaklase ko yan, ma'am, si Arnie uh-huh. Trinidad. Yes, he was my classmate in College of Mascom, pero... He, he shifted to another course. Na, na ano, nabigyan siya ng too much attention ng mga babae sa College of Mascom, kaya hindi niya nakaya. He went to another college. <laughs> okay. Arnie, why did you want to become a teacher and not a broadcaster? You abandoned us. <laughs> Actually, from the start, I wanted to be a teacher. Hindi mo teacher, uh, no, education? Hindi po, sociology, ma'am. Sociology. Oh, sociology. Good. Sociology helps us understand okay. <laughs> the society which produces the teacher. The teachers. Okay, go ahead, Arnie. It's it's really funny because I really wanted to become a teacher from the very start. But my but my mother didn't want me to become a teacher. Sabi niya kasi wala kasing hindi do ako kikita ng pera. But oh, to cut the long story yeah. short, oh. I left broadcasting, um, joined literature, and then ended up taking my masters in sociology, and then ended up teaching at the Department of Sociology of the University of the Philippines. So, like a teacher din ako. I want to be a teacher because you influence a lot of lives. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah, I yeah, have yeah. fun teaching people. 
teaching kids. Yeah, yeah. You have to like uh, the, the, the kids. You have to like uh, the, the, the children. I, I will not say children. Your learners. Uh-oh. Yes. Uh-oh. What about si Miss Non? Uh, ma'am, Madam Principal Miss uh, Lourdes Non, why did you become a teacher po? Like Madam Secretary Liling po, my mag, there is a teacher and she really inspires me and na yung pagmamahal po sa mga bata because I am a mother of six children also at late na po ako naging teacher nagtapos ng education so ang passion ko po is to really uh, take scares ng mga bata I see so ma'am yung sa, uh, sa case po ninyo naging mother muna kayo and then you became a teacher yes, yes ma'am exactly so, Ayan, oh. I see. Okay. What about po si Miss Max? I describe them as teacher dynasties, Rose. Family um, families of teachers, di ba? Ma'am, ma'am, actually, ma'am. 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 And then they produce the lawyers, the doctors, uh, lahat-lahat yes. na. Yes. Through their, their sacrifice and, and everything. Na- oh. Nakikita ko, ma'am, yung mother ko pag nagko-coach siya sa mga bata, sa mga, sa mga competition sa district, at nagpa-participate po ako doon kasi nai-inspire ako doon sa mga batang tinuturoan niya. And yun po yung reason kung bakit naging teacher din po. I see. Okay. Si Miss Mags naman po, please please ano share your story. Actually po, hindi naman talaga education ang course ko. Bachelor of Science in Commerce, major in Banking and Finance. Kaya lang... <laughs> Pareho uh, uh, na tayo sa labas. <laughs> then, nag-abroad ng two years. Pagbalik <laughs> ko, nag-asawa na po ako. Then, akala ko okay lang na maging plain housewife. Kaya lang sabi ko, kailangan ko na magtrabaho. Since na commerce po, kailangan sa bank po, eh, dalaga ka, eh, may asawa naman ako. So, nagtanong po ako sa DepEd kung paano mag-apply. Ang priority daw po nila is for year course na education. So, ang ginawa ko po, nag-aral uli ako ng science major. Nag, kasi po, nung bago ako maka, mag-abroad noon, naka-methods na po ako. Then, nag-take ako ng Tibet. Nakapasa naman. Then, kahit pasado na po ako, di pa rin ako nag-apply kasi kailangan po uli mag-aral. Nag-science major po ako. Then, nakapasok po ako 1997, secondary school teacher po. Secondary mm-hmm. school teacher. And you became, now you're an elementary school teacher? Oh, na, no po. Nagi, na-promote po ako ng principal sa elementary kasi po walang, walang islat ng principal sa secondary. So, tinanong po okay. ako ng superintendent namin kung willing ako maging principal sa elementary. Sabi ko, I'm more than willing. Sabi ko po. Ay, okay. Okay, natanggap ko po. Okay. Ma'am, ngayon pakinggan naman natin, paano napadpad si Miss Jessica Gross sa Germany? When I was young, I wanted to be a teacher too. Pero pagdating ko ng college, nabagong bigla kasi nag-mascom na ako. No? Um, uh, noong nakilala ko na yung, ano ko, yung aking ex-boyfriend, <laughs> si Mascom ko ngayon, um, uh, pagdating ko sa Germany, sabi ko, ano bang magandang gawin? So, um, naalala ko yung aking pangarap nung maliit pa ako na tulungan yung mga kapitbahay namin mga bata sa mga assignments nila. So, sa ko, sarili ko, mag-teacher na lang ako. So, uh, I studied again dito nung uh, year 2000 sa Frankfurt. Ngayon, teacher na ako. Teacher o oh, uh, sa English tsaka sa history. So, 16 years na rin ako lang tuturo dito sa secondary school dito sa Okay. Ma'am, final word nyo po for our viewers. Uh, siguro ang magiging tanong pa rin nila, kailan ba talaga magbubukas yung klase? <laughs> we have to give the president a choice. So we're going to make him, uh, to give him a choice of three possible uh, dates for, for opening. This is what we did also. Uh, this is what we did also uh, last year. No, So Mamili, if you follow the law, the original law, uh, it should be by August 23. Then sabi namin na uh, uh, depending on how COVID behaves, uh, by September 6 and September 13, that long dates, and pipiliin niya uh, the date which uh, uh, 
siguro on advice also of the other agencies of government kung medyo uh, medyo safe na but uh, right now it has to be blended pa rin pero yung kung matutuloy yung aming um, uh, efforts for for pilot uh, studies uh, we might uh, do pilot uh, we might do uh, uh, a mix of blended and face to face in particular areas Kasi there are places naman talaga which uh, uh, mababa ang uh, risk assessment nila and they have never even heard of the word covid so what are you people talking about <laughs> What is that? <laughs> they never heard naman sa kanila yun. Um, uh, my favorite island, I, I have a very favorite island na uh, they were so surprised when we were all debating, debating. And this is Sikihor. Uh, Nag-open sila June last year. Sabi nila, what is the problem? Kasi zero sila eh. Zero COVID sila. So, uh, hindi nila mag-gets kung bakit <laughs> nag-aaway pa yung buong bansa kung kailan magbukas. So there are places like that na we, we will make concessions. Okay. Oh. But so we have education been... continues. Tatlong dates yun. Uh, Oo. August I mean, 23, September 6, and September 13. Then he will make the choice. Oh, I see. So sa presidente pa rin po ang magdidesisyon. Oh, kasi... Oh, because that was uh, a resolution passed by, by both houses of Congress. Uh, okay. Hindi yan initiative namin as sila ang magsabi na the pres- yung, uh, situation of calamity eh, ang president mm-hmm. ang mag-decide. Okay. Sabi namin, give him choices para naman uh, ma- ano niya, pag-isipan. Mm-hmm. Okay. On that note, marami pong salamat, Professor Leonor Magtolis Briones. Ayan, Thank nandiyan you. na si Magtolis. Ma'am. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for this opportunity. Maraming salamat po for joining us and for answering our questions. Of course, yung panel po natin ngayon, uh, we're scattered around the world. We are um, yeah. in London, uh, Germany, Frankfurt, Germany, Dublin, Ireland, and Sepanganiban uh, Camarines Norte in the Philippines. And of course, um, Metro Manila, Philippines, where uh, the uh, secretary is. Salamat po. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. I'll see you soon. Face to face. Oh, sana. <laughs> sana.